Hi everyone. Uh, we'll just give it a few minutes for everyone to start filtering in. Um, if you could pop your uh, microphones on to mute, please, for us, that would be much appreciated just while we're waiting um, for everyone to pop in. Yeah. I'll just repeat myself again, just as people are filtering through. So hi, everyone. We're just giving it a, a few minutes just while everyone is coming in from the waiting room. Um, if you could just put, pop yourself on mute um, whilst we're waiting, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay, we've got a few more people coming in, um, but looks like, yeah, people are sort of getting ready and are here. So I'll just say once more, hi everyone, welcome. Uh, we're just letting people um, come on in. Um, if you could just pop yourself onto mute whilst we're waiting, that would be fab. We'll just give it 30 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and start. Cool. Okay. I think we are, or everyone that's kind of was in the waiting room is in now. So um, we will just go ahead and get started. Hopefully you can all um, hear me okay. Um, if you, yeah, just could, um, I can't see everyone on the screen at the moment, but if you some, a couple of you could just pop in the chat, just say that you can hear me. Okay. That you can hear us. Okay. Um, that'd be really helpful just to make sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's all right. Amazing. Good stuff. Glad. <laughs> Glad you can all hear us. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, welcome everyone. Um, we're really excited um, to have a um, Student Volunteer Week a national event. My name's Amy and I'm the Student Volunteer um, Coordinator at Aberystwyth Students Union and I'm a committee member on the Student Volunteer Network who organises Student Volunteer Week e um, every year and this year it's actually its 20th year of, of, of celebrating Student Volunteer Week. So if you haven't been part of it before, um, Student Volunteer Week is a UK-wide celebration of student volunteering as an opportunity to, for students to find out um, more about volunteering, take part in volunteering, and also a chance for us to celebrate volunteers, student volunteers across the UK. So um, if you don't mind, actually, it'd be really nice to see um, who is joining us from across the UK. If you could comment in the chats below which university you're from, um, we'd love to create that and sort of do some shout outs at the end um, from where you're, you're joining us from. Um, if you are doing any volunteering over the next week or so, um, joining any talks or activities as part of Student Volunteer Week, we'd love for you to share that on social media. And you can do that using the hashtag SVW21 or hashtag Student Volunteering Week. So um, please do share the volunteering that you are doing this week or anything that you're involved in. Um, in terms of the today's talk and the reason that you're all here, um, I'd like to introduce Laura Easton, who is the Workforce and Volunteer Special Projects Lead for the 2020 Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Um, and she's going to give us an overview of upcoming game, of the upcoming games and, of course, um, how you guys can all volunteer um, in a few years' time, which is really exciting. Um, if you, so what we're going to do is, um, as I've said previously, um, if you could all stay on mute your, during the presentation, if you have any questions during the presentation, and um, please could you pop those in the chat and myself and my colleagues will collate those ready for the end to ask Laura. Um, you're welcome to keep cameras on or off um, during the presentation, but um, yeah, it'd be really beneficial if everyone could just stay on mute just so we can hear Laura as clearly as possible. Um, without further ado, um, Thank you, Laura, for um, taking your time to do this today. And yeah, really looking forward to hearing you talk. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everyone. And um, happy National Student Volunteer Week. Um, like Amy says, really appreciate you all taking the time to 
come on here today. I'm sure you're all very busy. You've got a million and one things on. Um, so hopefully you will be able to hear something of interest with regards to the Commonwealth Games, which will be held in Birmingham and the West Midlands in 2022. Um, and also more specifically around the, the volunteering programme that we have to offer as part of this event. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you very much. Um, I am the Workforce and Volunteer Special Projects Lead. So I lead on the volunteer and um, recruitment and selection process for our volunteers for the Games. My background is in event management. Um, I've worked on a number of international sport events, um, working in the volunteer management role. Um, I honestly believe that I have such an incredible job. Um, not only do I get to work on, on these amazing events, but I get to work on the people aspect of it. Um, volunteering and um, it's just such a special thing I feel I think when you volunteer in any aspect of life you are giving yourself to something you are giving up your time to aid and help someone else um, there has been many studies which shows the benefit in volunteering and it shows the benefit in your own personal well-being and um, your own um, mental health and your own sense of purpose when you are giving back that time to someone so I am a huge advocate for volunteering in general. It's a huge part of my life, um, obviously in my work career, but also in the volunteering that I do um, within the community and as part of some of them, a tutoring um, volunteer that I, um, volunteers that I have as well, um, because it really um, makes me feel good and feel like I have a purpose um, in this life. So um, a huge um, advocate for, for volunteering. And like I said, very lucky to be involved in the job that I am because I get to meet people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds. And I see what being involved in events like this, how, what it can do for people and how it can, um, and it sounds maybe cheesy or extreme, but how it can actually change their lives um, whether it's increasing their confidence, whether it's networking, whether it's them making new friends. But sometimes these opportunities can really be that step to um, something that's completely different that people had never thought of. So it's great to be a part of that. So today, I, like I said, I'm going to give a brief overview of the Commonwealth Games in general um, and then talk to you more specifically on the volunteer programme, what opportunities there are um, and how you can get involved in that. And like Amy said as well, I'll try and answer as many of your questions at the end as I possibly can. The Commonwealth Games, which will be in Birmingham in the West Midlands in 2022 is huge. I think you will all be aware of everything that's been going on um, last year, this year, the impact on the events world, on the sporting world um, has been phenomenal. Um, there are many sport events that have been postponed until 2021 and we still don't know what they are going to look like and how they are going to be. Um, in 2022, yes, I know we still don't know what things will look like or, or how things will pan out. But I'm very positive and I am very confident that the, the Commonwealth Games could be the first multi-sport event that's held in that in the way that it's usually held or in the where we have spectators, we have the volunteers, we have the cultural and we have everything that's got um, that we're used to at a sporting event. So I think it's going to be really special for not only the people of the UK, but people of the Commonwealth and around the world and bringing this together in a huge celebration of humankind. We'll be welcoming 72 Commonwealth nations to the West Midlands for 11 days of sport um, and we'll have 6,500 athletes and officials. Um, we will cover the, the, the West Midlands, Sandville, Solihull, Cannock Chase, Coventry, Leamington Spa and there will also be um, cycling, track cycling at the Velodrome in London. So as much as we say Birmingham 2022 across the region and we've also got our venue in London as well. We're looking, we'll be expecting 1.5 billion global TV spectators, hopefully over a million tickets to be issued. Um, we'll have around 43,000 games time roles. So that would include some of our volunteer positions. It includes our contractor positions. So more kind of short term employment, working with our different um, contractors who will come on board to support the delivery of the games. 
and um, it will include the the paid staff and em employees as well who who um, plan and, and put together the event. As well as sport, we have a, an amazing cultural programme and we have a cultural and festival team who work within the organisation um, who are bringing together just that wealth of culture and diverse um, diversity that is across the, the West Midlands. So not only the sport, but you'll have the, the cultural pro programme going alongside, which will start slightly, um, I think, four or five months before the event. So there'll be an, a, a build up to the event itself. 95% and this is an important one when it comes to legacy and, and um, how we use our venues and, and our buildings afterwards, 95% of venues are existing. So we are have a couple of capital projects that will be um, the Sandwell Aquatics Centre, so that's been built from scratch. But then we have a lot of the other um, existing venues, which will be having upgrades or um, just getting games time ready. Um, like I said, this is really important in terms of what it leaves for the region and the investment that goes in and how um, the local community can use that afterwards. We, there's a potential boost to the regional economy in excess of 1 billion. So again, bringing um, employment, that's bringing procurement um, contracts to, to local businesses um, and also just the, the travel, tourism and everything else that comes with the, the um, sporting events. Um, and again, this uh, the volunteers, which we'll go on to shortly, will be having around 12 and a half thousand volunteers who will be involved in the games. Our vision is that it's a games for everyone. Um, this is a huge focus for us and that we want to be as um, inclusive, as diverse um, as we possibly can to showcase the, the, the multicultural West Midlands. And like I said before, it's a mix of sport and culture and business that will bring the, the Commonwealth Games together just to, to show and give everyone an opportunity um, to be a part of it in whatever way that might look. The games will look to bring people together. So now more importantly than ever um, about having that human connection and about having people involved um, and really having um, communities come together, um, whether it's through volunteering, whether it's just celebrating through the sport or cultural festival, or whether that's just celebrating um, being a part of something special. The games will look to improve health and well-being. So again, a number of different initiatives and different projects and programs which will be available to people where they can be um, involved in one way or another, um, which is related to the health and well-being. Through those contracts and in the employment, it's looking to help the region to grow and succeed, be a catalyst for change and really put the, the West Midlands and Birmingham on the map. So we have um, 19 sports um, which will be taking place over the, the 12 days of competition. So it's from the 28th of July, 2022 to the 8th of August, 2022. We'll have 19 sports, including the eight para sports. So this is really important um, for us in that the para program is integrated. Um, as part of the, the, the general sporting programme, which means they run alongside each other. Um, the 19 different sports you can see there, aquatics, athletics, badminton, basketball, beach volleyball, boxing. Um, so I'll let you just kind of see through there. But then also the eight para sports that, that go with it. And the venue in London will be for the track cycling. Some of our competition venues here. Um, so we have the Alexander Stadium, which is based in, in Birmingham. Um, it's been upgraded just now. Again, another one of our capital projects. So that will be a really incredible facility once it's finished. The arena in Birmingham, which will host the gymnastics. We are making full use of the NEC area. So we've got the arena for the netball and then a number of the different halls and um, for the sports that you can see there and we'll also have our international broadcast center which we based from there sandwell aquatic center a new purpose-built facility for the the swimming and the the diving 
University of Birmingham. Um, so I don't know if we've got anyone from the University of Birmingham on the call to here today, but this will be a huge focus for us where the, the hockey and squash will be played, um, but also some of the, the University of Birmingham will be um, part of the Athletes Village as well. So a really key um, part to play. We have an amazing venue in Canic Chase. So the mountain biking, um, I've only been there once um, when the, it was covered in snow, so it looked beautiful, but such an incredible venue and um, very picturesque. And I think it will really showcase the region beautifully. And um, hopefully we've got some at least dry weather. Um, the Coventry Arena um, and Stadium for judo, wrestling, rugby sevens, like I said, the Lee Valley Velo Park down in London. Um, we have also the um, Sutton Park, we have Victoria Park, Long Bowls, which is down in Leamington Spa. We have the Edge Baston Cricket Ground, Smithfield. So this will be another purpose pill venue, which is just inside the, it's just at the city centre, not far from the Bull Ring Shopping Centre. Um, we'll bring together um, an outdoor beach volleyball, basketball, and this is where the marathon will start as well. So this will be a real city centre location with hopefully will be one of our live sites of entertainment as well, um, which will be really key and allowing lots of different people um, to attend when they're in the city centre. And then we have another couple of parks, Nicholas Park and West Park for some of the, the cycling activity. So it's a bit of an overview just on some of the sports and the locations that we will be um, across the West Midlands in London. But now focusing more on the volunteer programme. So the volunteers, Lord Coe had said at the, the Olympics in 2012, that volunteers can make the difference between a good and a great games. And I firmly believe that this is true. I think there has been a fantastic legacy of volunteering and what that looks like. Um, especially from London 2012, where it was really, I think the British people were put on the, um, the worldwide map on how they welcomed the world to London for the Olympics. We then saw this again in Glasgow, which was two years later, which hosted the Commonwealth Games in 2014. And I think that it will be very much the case when we have the Commonwealth Games here in 2022. The volunteers are the face of the Games. They're one of the only workforce groups who interact almost with every single client group. So it depends on what volunteer role that you end up in. But volunteers can be interacting with athletes. They interact with spectators. They interact just with local people who have nothing to do with the games. They interact with international visitors, our delegates. Um, you know, I think everybody that comes to games is a VIP, but some of you know are... are um, were VIP guests and having that interaction with a, a volunteer who is positive, enthusiastic, upbeat um, and pa passionate and caring about what they do, it can just really change somebody's experience of the, the, the wider event. So volunteers really do play such a critical, integral part of making what this could be one of the best games ever. I'd mentioned before that we're looking to recruit around 12,500 volunteers. So we are currently going through what we call our headcount planning to um, refine those numbers so that we can ensure that we recruit the right number of people to be in the right place at the right time. Um, we want to ensure that we have a, a local impact as well. So as well as ensuring that we have the right people, we do want to ensure that we give local people the chance to be a part of it. Like I said um, before, a couple of times looking at the, the, the diversity piece, ensuring that we have a diverse representative workforce. And all of this is important because we need to recruit the right people to have a positive experience um, so that then that has the, the impact on what the legacy will be after the Games has finished. We want to ensure that we give those who have volunteered with us the best possible experience so that they then inspire others, they then carry on their volunteer journey or they then start their volunteer journey, um, whether it's in sport, whether it's in their local community, but they keep being a part of that, whatever that volunteer community looks like um, going forward once, once everything else has left town. 
So there's a number of ways, um, a number of volunteer roles that we will have available. And I'll go talk you through the timeline in a second as to how you apply and when. But just again, to just give a bit of a background on the, the different terminology that we may use. So we have pre-games volunteers. We will be looking to recruit volunteers who will assist us in the selection event process. So you would be applying um, at the same time um, as you would for any other volunteer role. Um, but the pre-games volunteers will start slightly earlier where they would support us from September this year in conducting the interviews of all other volunteers. Pre-games volunteers will look to have commit to um, half a day um, every one to two weeks to, to come in, um, it'll be Birmingham based, but to support with the, the volunteer interview and selection process. So that's one to consider that if you are more local um, that you could potentially be a part of um, and interview the, the volunteers who are going to be part of the main event. We then have our generalist and specialist roles. So the majority of our volunteer roles are what we call generalist. And what that just means is that we can support you in getting your games time ready. So you don't need to have any specific skills, experience. You don't even need to have volunteered before um, to be a part of um, our generalist volunteer roles. All that we are really looking for is for people that are able to commit to the criteria, which again, I'll talk to you about in a second, but be able to commit and bring that enthusiasm and that passion and um, commitment um, to the experience. And we can train you and we can um, ensure that you're ready to fulfill the role that we then ask you to do. We then have some more specialist roles, which is something that we can communicate out um, uh, again, maybe more directly through some of the universities, where we are looking for people who have maybe specific skills or experience in, in particular areas. So for example, some of the sports will require people who have quite technical, technical knowledge. They will require that they've had specific experience um, or yeah, skill set in a particular area that's related to that sport. Um, so within some of the specialist roles, it might be a bit more targeted recruitment. But again, that's something that we can communicate out um, to see if your skills and experience align with what's required from those roles. I'm not sure the youth bit will um, apply to, to many on this call just now, but we will be looking to have, again, a youth programme, which is more of a targeted approach. Um, so it's just to make you aware that the, we don't have a lot of volunteer opportunities for those between 14 and 17, but there are some available that we would look to um, target and, and recruit um, to fulfill those roles. So just to have that awareness that there are, um, there are opportunities there for younger people. Within the specialist and generalist pots, the, the variety is... Um, yeah, there's a huge variety of volunteer roles that you can get involved with. So it can go from anything with volunteering within our accreditation team. So in order for any of us, um, anybody involved with the Games, have to get to the right place in the right time. We have to have an accreditation pass that gives us access to particular areas. So people within the accreditation team are vital to ensuring that we have the right access codes and that we have a pass in general that we're able to get to, to where we go. <laughs> so they're responsible for distributing all the passes, working with whether it's volunteers, it could be some of the athletes when they arrive, it could be the delegations, um, ensuring that they have everything that they need. We have volunteers who will, will be involved within transport teams. So that could be at arrival and departure locations at airports, train stations, it could be drivers, it could be those that work within um, logistics teams, so ensuring we have the, the right equipment and everything is where it needs to be. We have volunteer roles within the media teams. So for example, that could be anything um, being based at the International Broadcast Centre to um, ensuring photographers get the access that they need to help and coordinate all of the, the interviews and um, demands of the, the media. We have roles within sport, within results and technology, um, within what we call event services. So that's very spectator, front of house orientated. Um, 
there is a huge list and those role descriptions or those um, area descriptions will start to come online um, in a couple of months to give you more of an idea of, of what would be involved. But there really is something for everybody. And what I would say at this point is, I think to not get too hung up on um, what you're, what you perceive to be the best volunteer role that you can actually do. So there are some glamorous roles where you might be volunteering with the with athletes, or you might be, you know, the media one sounds quite glamorous where you're in and amongst the action. Um, but the opportunities that come up with some of the other volunteer roles as well that you just wouldn't foresee, that you just wouldn't, you just wouldn't um, know what you're going to get from that. So it's just to be mindful of. And it's very tempting to go for some of those glamorous roles. They are um, less of them than what the demand would be. But to just keep in mind that with the right attitude, the, the amount that you can get for um, the, yeah, that you can get from the um, any volunteer position that you might not think. Um, so yeah, just to be mindful of that when you're you're thinking about applying. So in order to apply, there are some set criteria that we are looking, um, that we ask people to meet. So volunteers have to be 18 years of age by the 1st of January in 2022. Like I did mention, there were some opportunities for some younger um, 14 to 17 year olds um, as part of that youth programme. But the majority of volunteers um, for the main programme will be 18 years of age. You have to be available to volunteer here from the 28th of July to the 8th of August um, and to do a minimum of eight shifts within that two week um, or, or 12, day, 12 day period. We ask that you're able to speak and read English or British Sign Language. So it doesn't need to be your, your first language, but it's just that you have an understanding and that you're able to speak and read. Um, eligible to volunteer within the UK, agree to and pass the relevant security and background checks, accept the role and venue offered. So again, we will ask on the application form if there are particular roles you're interested in, if there are a particular venue that your area that you would wish to volunteer. Um, and we do try behind the scenes to match that up and to um, match people to what their preferences would be if, uh, if it matches their skill sets as well. Um, but it's very hard to do when you've got over 12 and a half thousand volunteers, which means you have to do over 25,000 interviews and go through um, potentially 40 to 50,000 applications. So um, while we do take it into consideration, um, we do offer the, the role and venue that's, that's best suited and available at the time. And then we ask that you complete and attend all the required training. And this is just to ensure that you're fully, um, you're fully ready to, to do your shift and you're comfortable and you're confident in the area that you're going to be working in. So there's a number um, of different, hopefully, benefits. And um, these are just some of the ones on the screen here. Like I've mentioned before, I think for me, some of the benefits, um, they're hard to put into words, they're hard to be definitive and they're hard to, for me to promise just now um, that this is what you're going to get from it. Um, I've seen people leave volunteering um, especially at these these events whether it's new contacts in areas of um, areas of work where they're looking to um, they're looking to gain experience in so they've made contacts they've they've got the 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 relevant people's names and they keep in touch with them and they keep networking and they start to build up their I suppose their kind of pathway and support and a career choice that they want to go I've seen people who have um, you know, just had am amazing experiences of, of meeting certain groups of people that they never thought they would interact with in the volunteer role that they're doing. Um, and I think, yeah, it's just having that open mind of the possibilities are endless with the right attitude of what you can get from this. But what I can say that you will definitely get um, is a uniform. So some you've seen all the snazzy uniforms that volunteers get to get to wear and they're going through the procurement and design process just now for our uniform. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to be involved in that. So I'm very secretive. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I've been assure, um, assured that it will be um, stylish um, and wearable after the games as well. So people will be proud to wear it. 
but you'll get your full um, volunteer uniform and kit. You'll get training for your volunteer position or the role that you will be placed in. And we're also looking in as well to um, accredited qualification in certain areas that that volunteers can do above and beyond maybe their required training for their position, but are there um, accredited courses um, related to vol volunteering that you can put yourself forward to to, to gain something extra um, by the end of this. When you are on shift, all your food, um, food, food and drink um, and snacks will be provided um, for you. Yeah, and obviously the provision there for dietary requirements. Um, your public transport as well will also be covered when you're in the West Midlands um, region. So it's just to be mindful of just now that we don't pay for anyone to travel to the, to the West Midlands and we don't cover accommodation costs either. So that is something that you would um, volunteers have to source themselves. But once they are in the West Midlands, the public transport when they are on shift will be covered. And then we also have our reward and recognition programme, which has a number of different items of um, and gifts to say thank you um, for everything that you have given to us, the time, the commitment, the dedication. And um, so you would be part of that um, reward and recognition programme as well. A brief overview of the volunteer games time volunteer journey. So our applications will open in the summer of this year. So it's um, quite a, a, a process to get through all those numbers that I'd spoken about before so that, that we get to the 12 and a half thousand when games time come, which is why we have to start our process so far in advance. We will be looking to all things going well, um, open applications in June. Um, it will be an online application and this is when you will um, have to go on complete the application form and then that's your name in the pot to be a part of the Commonwealth Games in 2022. It's also at this time that you would apply if you were interested in the pre-games volunteer roles that you would do this at the same time so it's not two different applications it would be this one and you can just indicate your preference. Once our applications close they're usually open for around two months we'll then start to invite people to the selection event experience so this is where um, it will probably be maybe a hybrid of online and in-person, again, depending on how things progress um, with regards to the current situation. But ideally, we would interview people in person. Um, it will be based in Birmingham, um, and the pre-games volunteers will assist us with that process. Um, it would be coming to, to a central location, um, meeting the team, starting to see what you would be involved in. So it's as much as it's almost a bit of an interview for us as well as for you to ensure that you're happy with what you're um, being involved in. And an informal 20 to 25 minute interview where we start to just dig a little bit deeper to see where you where your skills and your experience would be best fit within the, the organization um, and games time roles. January in 2022 starting to start to find out if you've been accepted. Um, we start our training program in the April. So there are three different elements to training. Um, the orientation event, we have role specific training and venue specific training, which will um, be a mixture of in person and online events. We will then come June June, July time start to equip you with everything it is that you would need um, to, to volunteer. So making sure that you've got your uniform, making sure you've got your accreditation, um, ensuring you've got your, your shifts, um, your, your schedule so you know where you've got to go, what time, um, in order to be ready for the 28th of July or maybe slightly before, but um, in order to be ready for when the games begin and you actually begin your volunteer role. Um, and do what you have applied to do after all this time. Um, that's a bit of an overview for the volunteer programme. I did want to just highlight as well the other opportunities to get involved. So again, I'm here to champion volunteering. Um, applications open in June. But there are so many ways that you can be involved within the Commonwealth Games in 2022. All of the information is on our website, which hopefully we'll be able to get sent out after this. There are paid opportunities. So again, um, I'm sure maybe a number of you, you're still at university. Um, 
uh, in colleges. Um, so I don't know if paid employment is something that you're looking for just now. Um, we've mentioned the cultural programme before. So if that's something that your, um, your background or if that's something that you're interested in, how you can get involved with that. We have an opening and closing ceremony as part of the event. They will also be looking for volunteers um, as well, which launched not long after, or which launched just after our, our programme. Again, that's something to be aware of, to be part of what, whatever they're, they're going to do with the opening and closing ceremony. We have a community club programme called United um, by 2022. So again, if you are local, if you're in West Midlands, if you are um, working or if you volunteer with any community groups, this is something that you could potentially get involved in different investment and um, programmes that are, are um, and funding that are related to this. We have an apprenticeship scheme and also there's the Queen's Baton Relay, which will go throughout um, some in some shape or form throughout the whole of the UK, but there will be a huge focus on the Queen's Baton really in the, the West Midlands as well. So again, there's just other opportunities to be a part of that programme. Um, and again, those updates will be on the website. So I'm just going to show this quick video and hopefully you'll all be able to hear it um, just to give, um, to what it can feel like, hopefully, um, to, to volunteer, so this is from the 2012 Suddenly, the team started winning medals. People were mentioning the games makers, the volunteers. Who are those people? The games makers have stood out as being absolutely extraordinary. It was kind of amazing, wasn't it? They recognised Ireland. Somebody else is walking in behind us, they recognise their country. You know, like we were sort of singled out, you know, good morning Australia. You know, it was nice. You've been perfect, you've been polite, friendly and really helpful. The games makers have been terrific. In fact, it really, watching them, I wished I'd been one of them. It has really, really been the best games for me and it wouldn't have been possible without you. They've been to the Arab Bowl, they've been the greatest support. I think we have about 20 pictures with them so far. Absolutely awesome. Record good on. World class. Wherever you go, there's always somebody to help you. They've just thrown so much energy into it and it really has made it a really fantastic day. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Games Makers! Oh, thank you, Games Makers! Thanks a lot to all the Games Makers, you've been amazing! To all the Games Makers <laughs> from Australia. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Oi, oi, oi! Thank, thank you, Games Makers! You've made a great day for us! Thank you, Games Makers! Thank you, Games Makers! Thank you, Games Makers! Thank you, Games Makers! It's been great and they've been wonderful. Team GB has inspired a generation, the athletes have inspired a generation, but the volunteers got a standing ovation at the closing ceremony. The volunteers have grabbed the hearts and minds of our nation and the world. It's been an, an honour and a privilege. Thank you. So yeah, that video clip I hope just shows the impact um, and the difference that the volunteers at 2012 made. Um, and I'm more than confident that it's going to show the, the difference that the volunteers at 2022 will make as well. Um, so hopefully some of you can be a part of that. Um, but yeah, that's it from me just now. I think I've probably spoken for long enough. Um, I've not been keeping an eye on the chat, so happy to answer any questions that people may have.
Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much, Laura. That was great. I'm so excited to see um, the games come to Birmingham in a couple of years' time. So yeah, that's been really inspirational. Um, we have had a couple of questions. Um, I first, so um, I'm going to do a bit of a shout out actually because we've we've got um, over 19 different um, organisations, yeah. uh, students from 19 different organisations here. So um, I'm just going to um, do some shout outs and it'll just give people a chance to um, write some extra questions in the chat because YouTube, we've got um, people watching on Zoom and YouTube and YouTube is a little bit behind. So um, I'm just going to do a quick shout out. But if you've got questions, please do write them in the chat and we'll make sure to pop them over to Laura now. Um, but yeah, we've got 19 um, university or students from 19 universities at the moment. So we've got University of Manchester, UAE Bristol, BCU, York St. John's, Newcastle University, University of Birmingham, Edge Hill University, Cardiff, Swansea, Warsaw College Students' Union, University of West London, University of Hertfordshire, Newcastle, Loughborough, University of Wolverhampton, Aberystwyth, York St. John and LSE. So um, yeah, amazing, oh. really <laughs> cool that this is such a yeah. nationwide event. Hello to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I'll go on to the questions. Oh, and LJMU, I'm not aware of that. You'll have to write that one out for me. I'm not aware, aware of which university that is, but LJMU, there is also that as well. Liverpool, St. John's, uh, mm -hmm. Liverpool, John Moore, Sheffield Harrow as well. So amazing. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've had a couple of questions, Laura, coming through. Um, there are two that sort of link together. So what well, I've had one from Camilla Woodrow Hill and Zoe Robbins. So Camilla asks, is the application for paid, is it the same application for paid opportunities and volunteering opportunities? And then kind of linked to that, is it the same um, application for volunteering with the opening and closing ceremonies as well as um, volunteering? Great questions. So no, they are all separate. Um, so you will find all the information on the Birmingham 2022 website, but there will be, so for paid employment, there will be, I suppose, again, there's two different elements here. So paid employment, there are roles within the organising committee. So they are always advertised on our website on how you can get involved. And the closer that we get, get to, to kind of games time, the roles start to become the kind of shorter term contracts. So that's something to keep an eye out on. There will also be opportunities within um, some of the contractors or providers who are part of the games. So those are those are ones that they'll advertise separately. So again, I think they would just be on your kind of typical job sites. So there's ways to get involved with the games um, with yet some of the, the contractors. Again, we've not secured all of our contractors yet. So that would be an ongoing process. Um, so again, that might be some short term work. So different applications. The opening and closing ceremonies, it will be again through a link on our website, but that will be a separate application that will open um, later on this year. So it will be slightly after um, when the, 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 the Games Time Volunteer Programme opens. Um, but yeah, it will be a different one. Fab. Um, so I've had a question from Erin um, Abbott. Erin, um, if you want to come online, you're more than welcome to, to ask your question. We'll make it a little bit more of a QA and a um, now the um, yeah, screens sh stop sharing. Um, if you want to pop on and ask your question, Erin Abbott. Hiya, um, I was just wondering, um, is there any opportunity to watch some of the sport events off the shift? Yes, so another good question. Um, so I suppose, yeah, for us to manage the expectations of um, I, the what we would normally say when volunteering is that you don't get the opportunity to um, watch the sport event. Um, again, it very much depends on the volunteer role. That If you're able, if you're based in a venue or depending on where you are, you get to potentially see snippets of it but yeah unfortunately um there is no opportunity to, to kind of stay in the stadium or stay in the the venue to watch the event um that it would be something that it's all ticket based so um being a part of it and being there you will be able to soak it up you will be able to see like i said snippets but usually within your volunteer role when you are on shift you'll be um so busy um that 
yeah, good question. And again, that's just to manage the expectation of, um, unfortunately, when you're working and volunteering there, you don't get to see really any of the, the sport. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erin. Um, so I've got a question from Elizabeth Hignett. Would you like to pop on and ask Laura the question? I just wanted to know if you could have people that you want to volunteer with. Uh, me and my friends both want to volunteer, see if we could work together. Yeah, another good question. Um, like thinking I should build this into my um, presentation because these are all very good um, yeah, yeah, questions. Again, the answer would be we would try, um, but just given the sheer volume of numbers and people, um, it's not something that we actively are really able to do is to um, pair people or um, assign groups of people to, to volunteer at the same time. Um, if you put down the same preferences and the same venues, it might turn out that you're you're able and you're part of the same, um, you could be part of the same teams, um, but there's a lot of different factors. You would have to be available on the same days and, and everything, which again, you might well be. So it could work out, but there's just no guarantees um, that you would be on the same shifts at the, the same time. Thanks, Laura. Um, so I've had two very similar emails from um, Michael Moyo and um, Suna Atka, Atka, apologies for the pronunciation of your names. Um, so they've both asked, um, can we um, sign up to emails to be notified when it's time to apply or do we have to continuously keep checking the website? No, you can sign up just now. Um, so on our website, we have a register your interest form. So if I can maybe, um, I don't know, Amy, if that's possible, if I can send the link out to, to yourself, that's maybe something we can follow up to everyone that's registered today. Um, but on the website, the Birmingham 2022 website, there is register your interest in volunteering, um, where you can sign up just now. You will, you can opt in or out of the marketing um, emails to, to hear other updates. But when the volunteer applications go live, you will be contacted um, to see, yep, volunteer application are open and yeah time to get applying so you can do that just now fab um i think i've got the link laura i'll pop that in the chat in the minute whilst oh I'm amazing whilst thank you I'm just answering the next question so um i had a question from becky mcwinney do you want to pop on and ask your question hi there um it was just a quick one on how to make your application stand out because you'll have so many applications and the interview process what can you do to make your applications yeah, yeah. So um, I think in order to make your, your application stand out, it's the, like I said, the passion and enthusiasm, um, dedication um, or being dedicated to the, the time as well that you, you, have to, you have to put in. So again, fully appreciate that you know, when we do these programmes, we are asking volunteers to commit to a lot. Um, so it's being able to take the time and to fill in the application form with as much information as you possibly can. So again, it might depend on the, the types of roles that you're looking to apply for, but to be available over the games time is very important of having that availability and commitment um, and taking the space that you can through the application form just to, to show um, you know, what it would mean to you um, relating it to any kind of experience especially um any and again it does need to be volunteering experience but just relating um some of the key areas that maybe you've gained throughout your university or if you've got part-time jobs um customer service um how you've um Again, you'll all be examples of this of how you um, have committed to a course and you know how you um the, the, the dedication that you've shown that so yeah a bit of a politician's answer there but I've not really answered the question but is it is where you it depends on the roles that you're applying for but what I would say is just really showing that your enthusiasm and commitment and try and relating it to the the areas that you would like to volunteer in as much as possible and the different areas um 
that you can be involved in will be on the website and that will be highlighting you know this is the type of you know it might be a results technology I'll give a brief overview of, of what that involves and also the kind of key skill sets that might be um, aligned to that um, so if there are particular areas just making sure that you've given some thought and, and evidence to how that aligns with your experience. Great, thanks. Um, so I'll pop over to YouTube now. We've had a question from over there, um, but it also links with a um, question that we've had on Zoom as well from um, Jennifer. So um, is it possible to volunteer if you have never been to Birmingham or if it's your first time volunteering? Kind of, um, yeah, what, what do you think their chances are? Um, I'll let you answer that first then as there's a sort of little carry on from that. Okay, cool. Uh, yes, by all means. Um... Again, you know, there is, there is a, a priority for us to try and um, ensure that local people have the opportunity um, to, to volunteer. But just because you've never been to Birmingham before doesn't mean to say that you cannot be involved. Um, like I said, there is um, venues all throughout the West Midlands and also in London. Um, so for the majority of our positions, anything that you would need to know about the area, the venue or the sport, then we would make sure that we cover that in the training with you so yeah you don't have to have um, been to any of these places before and when it comes to yeah volunteering again um, it's a priority for us is to to get new people into volunteering so just because you've never volunteered before um, in any aspect or you've not been a part of anything like this before it would not um, hinder your application in any way um, again it comes back to that availability and and how you can um be committed to the the role that, they, that you're looking to do so it, it definitely wouldn't hinder the application and it's not the priority of what we're looking for great um so actually following up um from lara's question abby has asked the same question so abby um abby airy Apologies if I've said your name horribly wrong again. Do you want to pop on and ask your question because it's exactly the same that Lara's asked over on YouTube? Hiya, you're right. Hiya. Um, so my question was, um, I'm just a bit um, thinking way ahead of like where I'd have to stay. Um, I don't know the area or whatsoever. Um, so would we get assistance, like recommendations where to stay? I know we have to pay for it ourselves, but it's just like, you know, yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes it makes perfect sense. Um, so we are working with our accommodation team just now. And we are looking um, with the, the kind of tourism, trade and investment teams as well, um, and working with Chambers of Commerce of how can we show the, and how can we share the different levels um, of accommodation that people can, um, that people can stay in in Birmingham. So I'll be honest, as a team, we wouldn't be making specific recommendations of where to stay, but as an organising committee, we'll be able to direct in the, the, the kind of places of, okay. um, yeah, I suppose like recommendations of if, different budget levels of, of where you can go and what's available um, okay. in types of oh, area. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, Are I there, didn't I'm... start my video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are there any um, bursaries? Lara on YouTube's actually asked specifically, are there any discounts or bursaries with the accommodation? If you could just touch on that. No, there, mm. there is not. Um, there might be um, separately. So there might be other things that are, are going on again with, with universities and, and different links. I'm not sure if there would, would if that's something that's existing or if that's something that um, would be looked at, but um, it's not anything that we would um, arrange from the organising committee point of view um, with regards to discounts or, or any um, bursaries okay. of support. No problem. Okay, so um, I've had Re asking, can we re-watch re this presentation? Yes, this has all been streamed live on YouTube at the moment um, and you will be able to access that later on as well. Um, I'll pop that link into the chat box as well. Um, I've then had a question from Camilla Woodrow Hill. Do you want to pop online? and ask the question. If she's still here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
putting people on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> She's possibly not here anymore. Um, her question was, can you get discounted tickets as a volunteer? Um, no, <laughs> you don't get that. You don't. You don't get the discounted tickets when you work there either. Um, not at the moment, anyway. If that changes, then who knows? Um, that would be something we would keep our volunteers updated in. Um, and these things change all the time. But at the moment, yeah, um, opportunities for tickets going on sale will come up later this year. Um, again, signing up to the register your interest form will keep you updated on when tickets go on sale. Um, and again, I, I can't um, talk to the, the different strategies of, of ticket sales and prices um, at the moment. I'm, I'm not entirely sure of, of that side of things, um, but it's not something that, that we offer just now um, as part of the volunteer programme. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, I've got um, Paul, Paul Barlow, I think is another SVN member. Do you want to pop on and ask your question? <clears throat> Mine was a bit of a cheeky follow on from the uh, encouraging local people. Obviously, Coventry is localish, and I just wondered whether that whether it was a West Midlands locality or whether it was a Birmingham locality. West Midlands, yeah. So very much. Um, again, we we talk about Birmingham twenty twenty two, and that is where the majority of the venues are. But it's um, very much a West Midlands um, production, if you like, um, just with regards to the the vast scale and. Um, of an activity that's taken of um, taking part throughout the region. Thanks. Oh, so, sorry, Paul. Sorry. And um, we've had someone on YouTube actually ask if they they're from Doncaster, can they volunteer? I think you've touched on this, um, but if yeah, if you could just. Yes. Uh -huh. So even if you're um, from Doncaster, like we say, it's it's um, it's a difficult one where we're priorities are prioritizing or it's a west midlands um region um, and we want to give opportunities to local people but it is a games for everyone so um if people throughout the rest of the uk can meet the criteria um then very much apply and again it's um on each individual merit as well from for each individual application so um you've got to you've got to be in it so I would just what I would say is apply and um you just take the steps from from there great um and then Lydia Perry had a question to ask do you want to pop on Lydia and ask about your question um yeah we were just wondering like what are some examples of the specialist roles that you spoke about yeah so we have quite a lot so some of the specialist roles might fall into say the medical category so we would have um, specialists, like a physiotherapist could be a, um, one of the um, specialist roles. So there would be certain qualifications that would be needed for a person to volunteer within a physiotherapist role. Um, it could be that it is a field of play manager. So when we talk about that, it's maybe more sport related. So it's somebody who understands the sport, who understands the different technical side of what what needs to be done and what needs to be um, within different areas and how the operations flow so again that's somebody like myself just wouldn't have that knowledge and we wouldn't have the time to train and get that experience and being able to coordinate the, the field of play for an international competition some of the other volunteer specialist roles could be linked to the results and technology and um, so again being very um, the, the different types of technology. Um, it could be having specialist skills or experience within um, different systems that have been used in an understanding of specific systems. Um, so there is a bit of a, a variety. Um, the majority of our roles are through the, the, the generalist pot where um, we can support and train people to, to be a part of it. Thanks, Laura. Um, so we've had uh, Robin on YouTube, um, but also Adamola on um, Zoom here. They both link together. So um, they're asking: Is there free transportation from when they live, from where they live? So um, they've asked specifically Bristol and London. So just an understanding of that. So within um, London, potentially, and that if you were based within the at the London venue, the the Velodrome. 
and um, then we could support with your transport costs there we wouldn't cover the transport costs from london or bristol to the west midlands once you were based there for the the duration of the the event then if you were there for the duration of the event then your public transport within the west midlands would be covered um, but unfortunately we can't cover any travel costs from other parts of the uk to london or the west midlands where the venues are Great, thanks. Um, and I think this is the last question now. I haven't had any more come through on YouTube or on Zoom. Um, if there are any more, you're always more, more than welcome to pop them in. Um, so we'll go to Steve Chessworth, if that's okay. Do you want to ask your question? Uh, yes, I was just asking if it's possible to be involved in the Queen's Baton. I don't know whereabouts in the UK that that travels to, but I'm based in the Northwest. So is it possible to be involved in the baton as it comes past here? Yes, yeah, so again, um, these are all things that have been worked out just now, so I, I'm not entirely sure <clears throat> where throughout the UK that it's going to, to go. Um, but direct into the website again with the register your interest form, that is where you will get kept up to date on all the key information and, and through our social media channels as well. Um, the Queen's Baton really will have opportunities for people to be involved. Um, again, I'm sure that they'll have opportunities throughout communities and wherever the Baton travels um, within local areas. Um, and that is something that will start to, to come out over due course over the next, um, over the coming months. Um, so again, I'll direct you to the website to, to keep up to date on that. And then by all means, um, when that starts to be released, then you can, you can be a part of it or plan right. to be a part of it. Thank you. Oh, what was that when? Apologies, I'm on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we keep, they keep on coming. Brilliant. Thanks so much for all these questions, guys. Um, these are fabulous. And um, we have had a few more come in. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Mohammed has just joined. Do you want to ask your question um, and pop online? Um, hi, uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, um, what would the standard shift be like? Would it be an eight hour shift or anything? Yeah, like yeah. so we would say roughly around eight hours. Um, some might be shorter um, than that. Again, it just depends on the venue, it depends on the sport and it depends on, um, yeah, the venue and the sports really or the, the location that you're, you're based at. So some shifts can start quite early in the morning. Um, some shifts could start within the afternoon, going into the, the evening or nighttime. This is something that we do try to capture when people are applying. Um, it's difficult to do when you're a year out. So it's something that we try and keep updated throughout the whole process is looking at people's availability and their um, preferences with regards to what they can do and when. So shifts i would say average eight hours like i said some might be shorter than that some again maybe more related to some of the cycling or road events might be slightly longer those kind of more one day competitions um and again the times that they start are very varied so you could have shifts starting from 6 a.m and um, your shifts could be starting from 8 a.m they could be midday later on in the afternoon into to the night time but we will try and look at people's availability and other commitments to, to work around that to ensure we reschedule um, onto something that would work for you. Thank you. Um, hopefully that's also answered Anne-Marie Spotton's question as well. She was just asking about the hours. Um, Anne-Marie, is there anything else that you wanted to ask um, whilst you've got the opportunity? Or has that answered your question as well? I no, I don't think so. Thank you. <laughs> that answered it. Thanks. Great. Oh, they, they just keep coming, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> so Which is awesome. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so um, Philip Highway has just popped one into uh, the chat. Do you want to pop online and ask your question? Hi Laura, um, my name's Phil from the University of Birmingham. I'm the volunteer manager here. I was just wondering how uh, from the university side, how can we support um, in the recruitment of volunteers and um, getting it out there? Like, how, how can we support you in making sure that you hit your numbers? Yeah. 
So Philip, you're slightly different in that the University of Birmingham are also a sponsor. Um, so we are um, working with um, a group um, from the university just now on um, how we cascade all the different opportunities that are available. Um, but I think for all universities, um, this is something that we're we're looking to continue on. This is one of our first um, exposures to the students in, in universities. So we'll be looking to touch base with volunteer managers um, or um, the sh student advisors or the, the key people within universities and colleges so that we can um, cascade the right information. What we are looking to do is provide those who have the contacts and the details of all, all the students um, kind of digital toolkits and assets that we can send on the key information that they can then, whether it's um, an email message that goes out, whether it's through social media channels or, or whatever whatever works um, best these days for, for each establishment, provide you with the right information, how people get involved so that you can put out through your channels. So that's something over the coming months we'll look to um, step up and share. Um, and when we have our official launch, um, closer to the, the start of the application process, then we'll definitely be keeping um, updated as well. Thanks. Um, so it looks like we've got one more question. Um, and yeah, I'll probably start to say we'll wrap things up now um, because the yeah, Laura's been <laughs> answering and talking for the last hour now. So um, yeah, we'll ask one or two more questions. And of course, if you do have any more, you're able to get in touch with us and um, using sort of the registration link that you've had today in the emails today, um, you're more than welcome to get back in touch with us at SVN um, and we will um, pass those questions over to Laura. Um, but yeah, if we start to wrap up now, so um, Laura, the last question is from Esme Bakewell. Um, do you want to go ahead, Esme? Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you live locally and it was more beneficial for you to drive, like if we was working in the morning at six, um, would we get like priority parking at the venues? Because obviously relying on public transport is not always the best bet. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid not. Um, again, these are the, the kind of luxuries that is not really afforded to any of us. Um, the parking around the venues is usually um, taken up with, with transport um, and with anything related to, to athletes and, and games family. Um, so even any, any um, members of the workforce don't get any access to, to parking on site. Um, just with regards to public transport and ensuring the welfare of our volunteers, we will just make sure that any shift that you are scheduled to do, we um, ensure one that the public transport is running, that it's safe um, and that um, yeah, we wouldn't be putting you in any um, compromising situations. Again, it's something that we would look on a case by case basis as well if for any accessibility needs or if there is any um, specific requirements of how um, volunteers get to their venue and their shift um, we would look to support that so as a general rule of thumb uh, no no parking at venues I'm afraid um, but we would definitely make sure that you are able to get to your um, shift in a safe way. Great as we says thank you in the chat. Oh thank you. <laughs> okay um, brilliant thank you so much everyone. Um, so pleased to have so many um, from across the country join us. I think we had over 150 um, oh, students wow. and staff join us today from what I can tell across 21 um, universities or students unions so um, yeah really great to have you all involved. Thank you so much. Um, once again, um, if you do have any questions, the um, registration form that was sent out to you, or the registration email that, that was sent out to you today, if you do have any questions, um, come back to us and we're more than happy to sort of liaise with Laura to answer your questions. Um, I've again put the um, registering your interest link into the Zoom chat. Um, for those on YouTube, um, I think all you need to do um, for anyone is just pop into Google 2020 Birmingham Commonwealth Games Volunteer. Um, and it does tend to um, pop up, but again, we can we can share the, the official link, but it, it is easy enough to find. Would, would you agree with that, Laura? I, I would, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's okay then. Um, and yeah, that is, that is everything um, from us. Again, thank you very much. Really lovely to have you all. If you've enjoyed thank today you. um, and you're doing anything over Student Volunteer Week, um, please use the, ha the hashtag uh, SVW21 or Student Volunteering. Um, a massive thank you to Laura for um, answering all of the questions and um, 
uh, yeah, delivering the presentation and just um, a, round of, a round of applause, please. All the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for taking the time to come along and um, yeah, it's just, it's great and hopefully we'll be able to, to update closer to the time as well, get a chance to kind of update presentation and keep you involved. But um, yeah, good luck with everything you're doing and your semester this year and just yeah, keep that open mind and hopefully some of you will be involved with us in 2022. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you, take care. <laughs>